Hello everyone, this is chapter 7, part 5. This is the demand estimation and forecasting chapter. And in this part, we'll learn about how to handle seasonal or cyclical variation in our models in forecasting the sales. Seasonal or cyclical variation is the regular variation that time series data frequently exhibit. Okay, This can bias the estimation of parameters in li linear trend forecasting unless we account for it. Okay, Example for instance ice cream sales. Ice cream sales are let's say for your company right this is a fall the this is the spring summer right oh we had winter here <laughs> okay so you have quarters so summer quarter let's say your sales are going up but summer is always much more higher than next year fall right and the summer spikes up again so this is something a manager asked me, how do I account for these seasonal variations in sales? This applies to home sales as well. During summer, springtime, home sales trend upwards. To account for such variation, we use dummy variables and we add them to the trend equation. Dummy variables take only on values of zero or one. Okay, so this shifts trend line up or down depending on the particular seasonal pattern. Significance of seasonal behavior is determined by t-test or p-value for the estimated coefficient on the dummy variable. Okay, so this is an example here. This is sales with seasonal variation. First, second, third and fourth quarter of 2017 data first, second, third, fourth quarters, all quarters of every year. So as you can see, there's an upward trend. However, the fourth quarters are always higher. To account for n seasonal time periods, n minus one dummy variables are to be added. So if you have first, second, third, and fourth quarter, right? Fourth quarter kind of acts differently. So what you can do is you can include dummies for first, second, and third quarters. Each dummy variable accounts for one seasonal time period, takes value of one for observations that occur during the season assigned to that dummy variable, takes on a value zero otherwise, okay? So for simplicity, let's say we're adding a dummy for the fourth quarter only, right? So this is what our equation looks like now. Qt equals to A plus Bt plus C. This is the dummy variable D4. So D4 will take on a value 1 if you are in a quarter 4. It takes on value 0 if quarters, if you're in periods of quarters 1 through 3. Okay. So effect of seasonal variation, so simply, you know, we are just adding one dummy variable. In order to fully capture the model, remember if you have n different seasonal seasons, you need n minus 1. So because I have four seasons, quarters, minus 1, I am, I am supposed to have three dummies for the fully saturated model. But in this case, I'm adding one dummy just to show you just some example uh, that how this relationship can be captured, right? The fourth quarter acts differently in each year, right? So let's take a look what it does. So this is my equation, right? Quantity sales equals A plus B, T plus C, D, 4. D4 is a variable that takes on a value 1 only for fourth quarter. So if you're writing down the equation for the quarters 1 through 3, it looks like this QT equals A plus BTY because D4 takes on a value 0 for quarters 1, 2, and 3. D4 takes on a value 1 for the fourth quarter. So therefore, QT equals to A plus BT. But this D4 takes on the value 1, right? Therefore, you also get C. So it's A plus C is the new intercept plus BT, okay? So these kind of dummy variables basically alter your intercept. This is what it looks like. Look, time period. And this is your sales. So for quarters 1, 2, and 3, 
you are estimating this line, this line. For quarter four, you are estimating this line. Remember, our data look like that. Boop, 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 boop. Fourth quarter, boop, 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 boop. I mean, this is three points on the one, two, three, fourth quarter. And you had one, two, three quarters, fourth quarter, somewhere here. Capture the effect of seasonal variation with a fourth quarter acting differently. This is how the data is coded. So how to create a dummy variable. These are your sales, 2017, first, second, third, and fourth quarter right here. And then we have time trend variable, one through 16. So year uh, 2017, fourth quarter, year 2018, 19, and 2020, okay? So you'll create a dumb variable that takes on a value zero, except when we are on the fourth quarter of each year. This is how we code it. I'm going to show you applied in a second. So this is the quarterly sales data, uh, data for statewide trucking company, 2018 first through fourth quarter 19 20 and 21 so if you look at the sales first three quarters of 2018 you know in 70s 80s and boom fourth quarter 150 to year 2019 first three quarters 80s 90s fourth quarter 162 year 2020 first three quarters 90s 100 it jumps up to 176 okay Year 2021, first three quarters, hundreds and hundred twenties, fourth quarter jumps to 180. So these are the time periods that we coded one through 16. How can we create, in this case, fully saturated model? You know, I have four quarters, so I need to have N minus one, three quarters uh, of dummy variables. So I'm going to create uh, dummy variables for period one, two, and three, okay? So at this point, I'm going to actually move on to my excel file this is a data set uh, statewide trucking chapter 7 so i'm going to grab only these columns and i am going to let's go to an empty um, sheet okay so i am going to create dummy for quarter one so this will take on value zero for all quarters except for the uh sorry first quarter of each year okay so i am plugging value one for each quarter first quarter of 2018 19 20 20 so dummy two is a dummy variable for quarter two and i'm also going to create dummy variable for quarter three three so two boom second quarter Here we go, and second quarter, and the third quarter, one here, here. I don't need a fourth dummy for the fourth quarter because you need to have only N minus one four time periods. I need to do three dummies. So let's run the regression data analysis, regression okay. Okay, labels, and I'm going to choose, let's clear this up. I'm going to choose sales here, sales column, okay? Input X range, I'm going to not only choose my time trend, but also all dummies. So if you run this regression, you get this. Interesting. So let's translate this to English here. It means, right? Here it means if I am going to, let me see. Here it means that if I, all right, let's start with dummies, right? The first dummy. So this means compared to quarter four, that's a comparison excluded group. Compared to quarter four, my sales are $69,787 less in quarter one. This dummy, second dummy, translates to English as compared to quarter four, my sales go are lower in quarter two by 58,775. And again, compared to quarter four, my sales are $62,000 lower in quarter three. And so this, let's talk about this time, time trend. 
This basic this says from quarter to quarter my sales go up by two thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars. That's what it means. Okay, so that's basically it, folks. Some final warnings. The further into the future a forecast is made, the wider the confidence interval or region of uncertainty. That means I can make, um, let's say, next period forecasting. Let's say I am trying to figure out what the Tesla price is going to be tomorrow. is a Monday. And currently, I'm checking actually on my device. Currently, Tesla stock price is $1,011. Okay, so Tesla stock price is $1,011 and uh, I can actually, let's say, give you a predicted value if I run regression on the historical Tesla data. So I can maybe give you a good prediction of Tesla stock price confidence interval for tomorrow, but three months from now on, five years from now on, we don't know. So that's going to be a harder prediction. Confidence interval is going to be really large. Model specification, misspecification, either by excluding an important variable or by using an inappropriate functional form reduces reliability of the forecast. And forecasts are incapable of predicting sharp changes that occur because of structural changes in the market. For instance, COVID, right? So let's talk about this based on the example we have seen in part four. So look at this Terminator pest control. Check this out. It's really interesting. If you look at this, the data ends in March 2020, right? So it's maybe easy to predict April 2020, but we we had this structural break here, right? That's the third point. We had the COVID coming into our lives. So we don't know how that's going to impact pest control. Maybe when people stay at home, they see more pests. Maybe more people will enroll. That's a positive impact on pest control sales. Or maybe some people are going to lose their jobs and they're going to be, they're not going to be able to afford it. So that's a structural break. It's hard to predict. Also, standing in March, maybe I can predict the sales in April more precisely, but predicting 2022 April sales is going to be much harder the more future into the period, the predictions are going to be less precise. Okay, so this is what confidence intervals look like. So if we're in period T bar, right, I am a little bit more confident making predictions for closed future. But for the future future, let's say two years from now on, I'm not sure what's going to happen to my pest control sales. Okay, so take a look at this summary of the chapter. Please read them and I will see you in the next unit. Bye.